Son and to the Holy Spirit. Praise ye the Lord.
The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, verses 6 to 18. During the reign of King Josiah, the Lord said to me, Have you seen what faithless Israel has done? She has gone up on every high hill and under every spreading tree and has committed adultery there. I, th I thought that after she had done all this, she would return to me, but she did not. And our unfaithful sister, Judah, saw it. I gave faithless Israel her certificate of divorce and sent her away because of all her adulteries. Yet, I saw that under unfaith as, yet I saw that her unfaithful sister Judah had no fear. She also went out and committed adultery because Israel immorality mattered so little to her. She defiled the land and committed adultery with stone and wood. In spite of all this, her unfaithful sister Judah did not return to me with all her heart, but only in pretense declares the Lord. The Lord said to me, Faithless Israel is more righteous than unfaithful Judah. Go proclaim this message towards the north. Return, faithless Israel, declares the Lord. I will frown on you no longer, for I am faithful, declares the Lord. I will not be angry forever. Only acknowledge your guilt. You have rebelled against the Lord your God. You have scattered your favors to foreign gods under every spreading tree and have not obeyed me, declares the Lord. Return, faithless people, declares the Lord, for I am your husband. I will choose you, one from a town and two from a clan, and bring you to Zion. Then I will give you shepherds after my own heart, who will lead you with knowledge and understanding. In those days, when your numbers have increased greatly in the land, declares the Lord, people will no longer see the ark of the covenant of the Lord. It will, neither, it will never enter their minds or be remembered. It will not be missed, nor will another one be made. At that time, they will call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all the nations will gather in Jerusalem to honor the name of the Lord. No longer will they follow the stubbornness of their evil hearts. In those days, the people of Judah will join the people of Israel, and together they will come from a northern land to the land I gave your ancestors as an inheritance. This is the word of the Lord. The act of apostle reading is taken from chapter 2, verses 14 to 21. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on the people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him as you yourselves now. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. 
but God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him, David said about him. I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad, and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest in hope, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. You will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, fellow Israelites. I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on, on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were caught to their hearts and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save, your, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. This is the word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. The continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Now, there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely, they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. And do you not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we are saying. But still, you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has gone into the heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son this is the verdict light has come into the world but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed but whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. This is the gospel of Christ. The congregation should play seat.
we reaffirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Show thy mercy upon us. O oh Lord, save our rulers. And you, thy ministers, with righteousness. O oh Lord, save thy people. Give peace in our time, O oh Lord. Clean our hearts within us. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ fasted forty days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are yet without sin give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your spirit and as you know our weakness so may we know your power to save through Jesus Christ our Lord Almighty and merciful God, you with nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all those who have penitent. 
create and make in us new and contrite hearts that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness we may receive from you the God of mercy perfect forgiveness and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom stands our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, your humble servants, in all our sorts of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by your governance, to do always what is righteous in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord.
Let us pray. Father, we thank you for today, which is made possible by you. As we go into your word, grant us illumination and enlightenment. In Jesus Christ's name we have prayed. Amen. Please be seated. Once again, we welcome you to this service. A new month, a new day. May the Lord bless the works of each and every one of your hands in Jesus' name. As we have commenced a new month, and are commencing it with the Lord, it shall be well with each of you and your household in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. We are talking today in our sermon meditation about becoming a member of the kingdom. We have been discussing in our sermon series uh, steps to manifesting the kingdom of God. And today we are talking about becoming a member of that kingdom. Now, interestingly, kingdoms have territories and they're supposed to be ruled by a king. So we're talking about something that has boundaries. A territory usually has boundaries. And when boundaries are in dispute, there is conflict. And this brings nations to war. We're talking about a kingdom that expands and spans from the spiritual to the physical. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 1 and the Acts of the Apostles chapter 7 verse 49 tells us that the heaven is where God's throne is and the earth is his footstool. He says, heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or where will my resting place be? We're talking about a kingdom that is so expansive, you cannot get the full grasp of its extent. And in those days, the bigger a kingdom is, the more powerful they were supposed to be. So if we're talking about a kingdom that is so massive, then we're talking about a kingdom that is very powerful. To be a member is to be then a part of something that is whole or to belong to a particular set of people. And there are certain things that are associated with that word kingdom. A kingdom usually has operating principles or guiding laws, which would say is the constitution. A kingdom has a language. A kingdom has a culture, a custom. A kingdom has expectation of its members. But today we're talking about how to become a member of this wonderful kingdom. And in our gospel reading, John chapter 3, we are told about Nicodemus, who came to Jesus Christ in the night to ask him about this kingdom because obviously there was a clear-cut difference. This difference was so clear-cut that after Peter in Acts chapter 2 and spoke, they had to ask him, brother, what must we do to be part of this? It was a clear-cut dichotomy, a clear-cut deviation from the norm. Something existed which they didn't know anything about, but they wanted to be part of because it was clearly superior to whatever it is that already they had. And in John chapter 3 and verse 3 to 5, which is our text for today, Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. We are talking about this kingdom and we are talking about membership. How do we become members of this kingdom? In the book of Romans, chapter 8, 
membership of this wonderful kingdom is given exclusively by adoption. In the earthly parlance, we become members or citizens of any kingdom by multiple means, by birth, by naturalization, by adoption. Today, a lot of people are relocating to greener pastures. But this kingdom of God we are talking about only comes into existence by adoption at conversion. If you do not, or if one is not born of water and the spirit, as we have read in the Gospel of John, you cannot be a member of this kingdom. God opens the doorway for adoption. But you must submit to acceptance of this invitation if you will be a member. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 15, we see the adoption. And in the gospel read, John 3, he says, You must be born of water, which in our sect, which within the Anglican communion, means baptism. In Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 25 to 27, he says, I will sprinkle upon their hearts. I will sprinkle water upon their hearts. Because at baptism, two things happen. One is for cleansing. Two is a public declaration to everyone that I am crossing over from this kingdom into God's kingdom, there is a public declaration such that everyone knows that you have submitted, you are willfully coming into a new kingdom, God's kingdom. And the second is to be born of the Spirit. Now, this is highly essential because the Spirit operates in multiple roles in this regard within this kingdom. And we will get to those things shortly. Now, we're talking about the first role of the Holy Spirit we operated within the kingdom as a member. And that is documenting your validity. When you want to prove that you're a member of any country, you carry a document, internationally a passport. And that passport carries the seal or the logo of the country. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 1 and verse 14, he says he has given the Holy Spirit as a seal, guaranteeing our salvation. So you see, the Holy Spirit, when you are born of the Holy Spirit, and he comes in, he is your passport, because you carry him round. And when anybody asks of you anything, it is through the Holy Spirit you can respond. It is the, your passport, if you're in a foreign land, should have means of identifying you, saying who you are or where you can be met or located. You're supposed to have an address. If you do not have the Holy Spirit, you don't have any address in heaven. You are just moving around. You have no seal. You are just a floater. Two. He is the validator. In Romans chapter 8 verse 14, he is the one validating your existence, saying, I am a member of this kingdom. He is the one that says, you have come into sonship, you have been adopted. In Romans chapter 8 verse 14, he validates that claim that you are now a member of this kingdom. And this kingdom has a constitution. The constitution is the word of God. And in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, in the Torah it was given for them to study it. But in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, he re-emphasized it. And he says, this book of the law must not depart from your mouth. You must study it. You must meditate on it day and night. Because if you are to be successful within the boundaries of this kingdom, then you must know what is expected, the operating principles of this kingdom. Now, the Bible says, faith comes by hearing, and hearing of the word of God. And 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17 says, all scripture is given by God, is inspired by God, and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, that the man of righteousness may be ready in all things. Now, 
this constitution, this word of God that he has given, that is supposed to make you relevant within the kingdom, that is supposed to be your guiding principles, such that you remain in tune as a member of this kingdom, telling your rights, your privileges, your acceptance. This constitution, the more you study it, the more you begin to understand the language spoken in this kingdom. And now, this language is the language of faith. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it said, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. The more you speak in, the more you meditate on this constitution, the more you begin to understand the language of the kingdom. It's faith. In Romans chapter 10, verse 17, it says, Faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. The more you speak, the more you grow within the constitution of the kingdom, you begin to understand the language of the kingdom such that, as James 1.5 says, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to all men generously without reproaching. But he says you must ask in faith because if you do not ask in faith, do not expect to receive anything. Why? Because you have not spoken the language of the kingdom. If you do not come with the proper language, you do not get the appropriate response. Although Matthew 7, 7 says, ask, seek, you will find, but you must ask in faith, which is the language of the kingdom. This kingdom has a currency which they spend, which is love. Now, Romans chapter 13, verse 8 says, O man, O no one anything except love. You cannot operate out of fear. You operate in love. You spend in love. You move about in love. Because it's like 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 13 says. He says, no matter how much I speak in tongues, no matter how gifted I am, if you do not do it in love, you are just a loud clashing symbol. You are a noisemaker. The operating currency of this kingdom is love. So as a member of this kingdom, you're supposed to know all this and to operate within this phase. Now certain things are expected of you as a member of this kingdom. And in first, Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 15, he says, and I'll read that shortly, and he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and was raised again. You live for Christ. You do not live for yourself. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, Paul proudly said, I have been crucified with Christ. No longer do I live, but Christ lives in me. As a member of this kingdom, this is the expectation of you, that you now live for Christ. Therefore, you must be careful. And within this kingdom, you must be gainfully employed, found dutifully operating in the business that the father has. The father is currently involved in that business and he expects you to be doing the same thing. And in Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18 and 19, he says he has given us that assignment which he expects us to be doing as members of this kingdom. And that is the assignment of reconciliation. And he says all this is from God. Who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ. Not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore expected to be gainfully employed in the father's business. Now, before the onset of the scourge of the coronavirus. The common language everybody was talking about that is commonly rife in Nigeria was the news of the country, everybody wanting to relocate, everybody looking for greener pastures, everybody moving to a better life. Because the country is tough and everybody wants something better. So obviously, same thing occurs in the spiritual. When somebody exists within a kingdom, there are benefits to being a member of that kingdom. 
In Acts chapter 22, permit me to take your time a bit and read from verse 22. Paul was in a Roman citizen. The crowd listened to Paul. I read from verse 22 until he said this. Then they raised their voices and shouted, Read the earth of him. He's not fit to live. As they were shouting and throwing off their cloaks and flinging dust into the air, the commander ordered Paul to be taken into the barracks. He directed that he be flogged and questioned in order to find out why the people were shouting at him like this. As they stretched him out to flog him, Paul said to the centurion standing there, Is it legal for you to flog a Roman citizen who hasn't even been found guilty? When the centurion heard this, he went to the commander and reported it. What are you going to do, he asked. This man is a Roman citizen. The commander went to Paul and asked, Tell me, are you a Roman citizen? Yes, I am, he answered. Then the commander said, I had to pay a big price for my citizenship, but I was born a citizen, Paul replied. Those who were about to question him withdrew immediately. The commander himself was alarmed when he realized that he had put Paul, a Roman citizen, in chains. To every kingdom, there exist benefits. Today, we carry the Nigerian passport. Some people carry other passports. But your passport determines, to a large extent, in the world, the benefits that will accrue to you. Today, many Nigerians do not want to carry the Nigerian passport because it doesn't seem to bring with it much respect. Everybody wants to be a citizen of mightier nations. Paul, at that time, Rome was in power. And to be a Roman citizen, you carried with you great respect. So also the benefits that come with carrying that godly passport. Being a member of this heavenly kingdom comes with many benefits. Remember, this is a kingdom spanning from spiritual to physical, from heaven to earth. You can imagine God's throne being in heaven and the earth being his footstool. Imagine him being the creator and he extended that invitation to you and said, be a member of my kingdom. Imagine the benefits that come with it. One, we have fellowship restored. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13 to 16, many times God, having created man, sought to fellowship with him. From the Garden of Eden, even till now, he seeks that fellowship with us. And in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13, he tells us, But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. For he himself, in verse 14, is our peace, who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. He come, you come back into fellowship with God. And you can imagine the extent of the benefit when God, your Father Almighty, is in fellowship with you. You can only imagine how far that goes. Two, you become a regenerated being. We are talking about spiritual regeneration. We are talking about sins forgiven. We are talking about unhindered access to God's presence. In the book of Isaiah, he says, It is not that my hairs are too heavy that I do not hear your cry. But he says, Your sins have formed a dividing wall. But then when you become a member of this kingdom, a kingdom where sin has no place, that dividing wall is removed. The hindering power is broken. And then you have unfettered access. Isn't it wonderful to be a member of this kingdom? You have prayers answered. You, have, you speak to God as a child speaks to Father. Like Romans chapter 8 verse 8 tells us. He says, we have the Holy Spirit by whom we say, Abba, Father. Once you are adopted as a son, you are here and you have the benefits that come with sonship. Thirdly, you are an overcomer. In 1 Peter chapter 2, 
it, it tells us in verse 8, verse 9 and 10, it says, Boy, you are a chosen people, a royal priest to the holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 18, it says, Children, you have overcome this darkness because of him who lives in you. Once you come into this kingdom, you have overcome darkness. You are in the light, and you can walk with confidence anytime, anywhere. He says he has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us the spirit of his son, Jesus Christ, whereby we call him Father. When the Lord God is your Father, come what may, you would walk with your head held up high. Two, you are an overcomer of the world. John 16, 33 says you would have trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Paul said proudly, I bear the mark of Christ upon my head. What can any man do to me? Fear those who can kill the soul and the body, not just the body. In Galatians chapter 4, in John chapter 3 verse 19, before I round up, he says the verdict has been given, and that's the final benefit. I've only highlighted a few benefits. The benefits are multiple and varied, and you can let your imagination run wild. But in John chapter 3 verse 19, he says the verdict has been given. And when that verdict was given, some things began to count and some things no longer mattered. And in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 19, he says, Neither circumcision nor circumcision means anything. What counts is a new creation. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17, he says, If you are in Christ, you are a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. Now, ultimately, we get eternal life when we transit from this world into the next world. So, we are in a kingdom where we benefit physically in this world and spiritually in the next world. Wouldn't you want to be a part of that kingdom? Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you because it is only by your grace we are worth we are. Help us daily to see the life you have laid down for us and to boldly embrace it. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us kneel to pray. In our intercession, we are going to pray today for the Most Reverend Henry Chukudum Undukuba, the primate-elect, Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Pray for him as he takes upon himself this assignment that God will support him as he prepares for his presentation later this month that God will endure him with grace and in spirit to shine the light of Christ and to call others into the fold of our Lord Jesus Christ making them members of the kingdom of God that God will grant unto him. Let us pray for the most reverend, Hector Tito Zavala Munoz, the bishop of Santiago and the primate of Iglesia Anglicana do Chile. Let us pray for this man of God that he will remain in the kingdom of God and he will make others members of that kingdom through his preaching and even his lifestyle we call others into the kingdom of our father let us pray for all parish church council and 
members of the standing committee in the Diocese of Lagos, that as God has called them at this time, he will also grant them the strength, the courage to be worthy elders in all our parishes in the course of this year, that their contributions will be meaningful, will be for progress. They, none of them will be cogged in the wheel of the progress of the Church of God, but they will continue to encourage others even to do more in the kingdom of God. We are going to pray for birthday celebrant, Mr. Ayojide Orekoya, Mrs. Abimbola Williams, Master Uluwashei Kechuku, Choton De Peters, Ms. Ireolua Murakio, Mrs. Tenida Ekeo Lere, Mr. Baba Tunde Fajamiroku, Mr. Baba Tunde Temitope Udufuye, Mr. Ulua Damilola Shonaya, Ms. Sophia Ulua Yemisi Ajado, Mr. Ibukun Akiola, Mr. Samuel Ulua Fayo Adedukun, Mr. Kolade Olayoye, Ms. Precious Kosisho Chuku Unwobodo. Pray for them that as they celebrate their birthdays today, the gift of the Holy Spirit and beautiful gifts to beautify their lives that God will release upon them. Pray that God will grant them more years in the land of the living. Pray also for Mr. and Mrs. Abayomi Ogunbo Dede. Today is their sixth wedding anniversary. Ask for God's blessing on their home and union and also for their children. Pray that God will uphold them in this marriage and no demon, no human agent will be able to scatter them. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who have gone to be with the Lord, that light perpetual will shine upon their souls. And that through the mercies of the Lord, they will continue to find rest and peace in the presence of the Almighty. We remember today Mr. Bolanle Manu, 10 years mind. Mrs. C.Y. Koka, 10 years mind. Mrs. Adefoluke Onobanjo Ogunkoya, 10 years mind. Mrs. Abiola Abiodu, 20 years mind. Mrs. Yebo Akinsoya, 20 years mind. Mrs. Sabaina Towobola Bajulaye, 40 years mind. Pray for members of their families that God will continue to be the Lord of their lives and that God we establish them the more even in the kingdom of his son Jesus Christ. Nothing will uproot them from his church but they will continue to serve even believing to the saving of the soul. In our family intercession we are going to pray for the following families of late Dame Dorothy Umbanefo CPA, Chief Olabo de George, late Reverend Peter Osaru Ogboma, late Mr. J. Adepegba Adeniji, CPA, Mr. Shola Ladende, the Okusis, late Pa Emmanuel O. Ekishola, Engineer Ken De Saka, Mrs. Gladys C. A. Abadin, Sir Josiah C. Onumonu, Mr. Sylvester Oputa, Mr. Maxwell Olubode Thorpe, CPA. Pray that the blessing of the Almighty will be their portion 
pray that God will grant them peace and his protection, that nothing will unsettle them. In our prayer for organizations, we are going to pray for my thousand things. More House School, the Athan Engineering Limited, Sahara Energy, Legal State Office of the Public Defender, Sucrose Crafts, Andersen Tax, Athena Travels and Tours, Senapa International Company Limited, BOT Nigeria Company Limited, Sunrose Consulting Limited, Books by Emo, Fian Wi Fi. Pray that God, who is the owner of the universe, will prosper these organizations. And pray that the consciousness of God will not be taken away from the directors of these organizations. As they receive from God, they will also be ready to give to him in appreciation of his goodness in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, now is time to pray for yourself. Today is the first Sunday in the month of March and the first day of the month. Pray for God's help. Pray for his blessing. Pray for his healing. That you will continue to be in health. His promise to save you from the snares of the fowler and to save you from deadly pestilence. Pray that God will fulfill in your life, even in this month. A thousand may fall at your hand, side, and ten thousand at your right hand. Pray that no evil will come to your dwelling. Pray that no calamity will befall you. Pray that the diseases of the Egyptians will not visit your dwelling. Pray for your children, your loved ones, far and near, that the everlasting arm of the Lord will support them and will keep them in all their endeavors. Also receive strength in this season of repentance, of reconciliation, and of renunciation of all evil that God will give you the courage to say no to satanic invitations to repent, to turn away from all wickedness and to be reconciled unto God. Pray for Nigeria as well. This is our own Jerusalem. The first prayer that God will banish from this nation and other nations the scourge of the novel coronavirus. That this world will be at peace. That God will put an end to the spread of this virus. Pray also for peace of the Lord for our country, Nigeria. Some are without hope. Ask God 
to visit them with his salvation. Now appreciate God for his goodness because I know he has answered and we are going to testify to all these prayers that we have put before him. And now we pray for the church and for all the world according to their needs. For the peace that is from above and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of God's holy church and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. For our bishops and other ministers, especially our primate, Nicholas Oko, our Archbishop, Michael Fakwe, and our Bishop, Bamishebi Ulumakai, that with a good heart and a pure conscience, they may accomplish their ministry, let us pray to the Lord. For the rulers of our country and all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. For the poor, the hungry, orphans and widows, and those that suffer persecution, let us pray to the Lord. For ourselves and all who confess the name of Christ, that we may show forth the excellencies of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light, let us pray to the Lord. That with all his servants who have served him here and are now at rest, we may enter into fullness of his unending joy, let us pray to the Lord. Together, Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. We pray you to have compassion upon our infirmities and those things which for unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Vouchsafe to give us for the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. To take the Sunday collection, we sing hymn number 787, 787.
Almighty God and our Father in heaven, indeed our hearts are filled with gratitude for all that you have been doing with us, in us, for us, and through us. This is a token of our appreciation. Father, Lord, accept us and accept our offering in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I ask of you that by reason of this offering, that this month of March shall be a month of dumbfounding testimonies for every one of us in the name of Jesus. The power of Trinity will work for us in our going out, in our coming in, in the name of Jesus. The Almighty God will enlarge your cause beyond your imagination in the name of Jesus. In this month, because your amen is good, you will not suffer any loss in the name of Jesus. God Almighty will send divine help your way wherever you turn to in the month of March in the name of Jesus. You have started well. You are going to end well in the name of Jesus. Every second of this month shall be filled with testimonies in the name of Jesus. We sanctify this offering in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Did we sing hymn number 765? February babies, we come to the altar. February babies, 765. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your children that were born in the month of February. Thank you for being faithful to them. Thank you for the journey of the past year. Thank you, Lord, for our Lord, for this new year. Thank you, Lord, for our Lord, because we will see them through. Father, may your name be praised forever in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for you today. The journey of this new year that have already started, the Lord will go with you in the name of Jesus Christ. He will journey with you in the name of Jesus Christ. In this new year, you will do well in the name of Jesus Christ. You will flourish in the name of Jesus Christ. No affliction, no tribulations, no challenges will be able to take you away from God's presence in the name of Jesus Christ. Sickness, death will not snatch you away from God's presence in the name of Jesus Christ. It shall always be well with you. May the Lord accept your offering. May it be used for the glory of his kingdom. Thank you, ever-living God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have seen the Lord goodness. His mercies are compassion. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. We have seen the Lord goodness. His mercies and compassion. 
We have seen the Lord goodness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh Lord, you are. You are so you February babies the best month in the year it is now time for the end of the month Thanksgiving we are going to stand the guild of steward we come round to take our offering we sing in number 766 766 and after that we take 394 766 394 
Submit yourself then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near you. They offer three him.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which the earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise holy father heavenly king almighty and eternal god through jesus christ your only son our lord for he is your living word through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin giving him to be born as man and to die upon the cross you raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right and honor. Through him, you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying
Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, this gift of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, gave you thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, I took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross and proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. As we look for his coming in glory, we celebrate with his bread and his cup his one perfect sacrifice. Accept through him our great high priest. These are sacrifices of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit. Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him and with him and in him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you on earth and in heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ.
do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. And so draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving.
Create in us pure hearts, O God, and renew steadfast spirit within us. Do not cast us from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation and grant us willing spirit to sustain us through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Lord be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be our living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and walk to your praise and glory. Amen. Please sit. The Lord be with you. Uh, we want to thank God for the joy of today, the first Sunday in the month of March and the first day of the month. All the prayers that we have presented before God today will be answered in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to thank God for the success of our vestry meeting and I want to thank all of you for coming together to contribute to the progress of this great cathedral and also uh, your activities in electing new standing committee members to serve in the year 2020. I pray that our labor of love shall never go unrewarded in the mighty name of Jesus. Our Lenten diet continues across the diocese and if you have home center, in your house, kindly see me for the booklet. There is a booklet that will guide our Bible study. Women of the cathedral should note item number five, that is the Women's World Day of Prayer, coming up on Friday, 6th of March, at the Faith Plaza, as well as what uh, they are projecting. That's the Cathedral Women, Women's One Day Lenten Retreat. It holds on Saturday, the 7th of March at 10 a.m. inside the cathedral here. So uh, they are expecting all our women to be here. It's just a day in the presence of God to listen to his word, to receive strength in this season, the season of Lent, period of um, repentance and reconciliation to God. I pray that God will make it a holy land for all of us in the mighty name of Jesus. We announce the home call of Mrs. Ola Tundum, Sabina Alayande on Friday, 28th February, 2020. At the age of 97, a regular worshiper in the cathedral, she used to sit in that corner it was when she turned 94 or 95 that the song came to relocate her to Badagri. She passed on Friday. We pray that our gentle soul will continue to rest in peace and rise in glory at uh, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I have this announcement. In the light of current happenings in the world, We've been talking about the novel coronavirus. And many articles are flying around on our WhatsApp, on the social media. And many of us are becoming jittery. 
Last night before I went to bed, someone sent a voice message and the man advertising garlic as the cure for this coronavirus. I want to tell us, don't listen to any of these. If you want protection, you can find it in God. God is the creator of the universe. Is the Jehovah Rapha. And so I want to warn us, beware of rumors so that it won't be like the days of Ebola that some people started bathing with salt and even taking salt in excess. And thereafter they developed what we should not be talking about here. Beware of rumors. Improve on your hygiene. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Wash your hand. Be neat with whatever you are doing. And also, fear not. Fear will push you into doing what you are not supposed to do. Fear not. You have a God who is mighty to save. If you read Psalm 91, verse 3, it says, Surely he will protect you, he will deliver you from the snares of the fowlers and from deadly pestilence. That is the word of God. A thousand may fall at your side. Ten thousand. Look at the number. Ten thousand at your right hand. He said, it will not come near you. Coronavirus will not locate you in the mighty name of Jesus. Come to the Lord's table believing that it is a means of grace. Don't come there, oh, I don't know if I should drink this now. I will contact something. You can't come to the Lord's table and be infected. It is a holy meal. It has been blessed. It, I've never seen it in history that people in the church, they come there, they contacted tuberculosis or anything. It is the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus cannot contaminate you. So if the world is scampering around, running out of scatter, you belong to a different kingdom. That is if you are truly a member of the kingdom of God, if you are born again. It is if you are not born again that you can fear the fear of the world. The Lord will continue to protect us and we answer our prayers. At 4 p.m. is at our season charismatic and healing service. Let us be there to pray to God. Let us rise to bless ourselves in the words of the spiritual tonic for this week. The tonic is taken from Isaiah chapter 49 verse 8. This is what the Lord says. In the time of my favor, I will answer you. And in the day of salvation, I will help you. I will keep you and make you to be a covenant people to restore the land. Now, take the blessing. Thank you, Father, for making me your own. I am a brand new creation, regenerated to manifest God's kingdom on earth and to restore the land to peace and prosperity. Lord, at this time of your favor, Answer all my prayers. Keep me from demonic attacks and save me from pestilence that stalks in darkness and the plague that destroys at midday. Satisfy me with long life and show me your salvation all the days of my life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord will answer your prayers. He will keep you. He will protect you. You will continue to live. You shall not die. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
the Dalsusana anthem. The first stanza. The Lord be with you. Let us kneel to pray. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And of his son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Be among you and remain with you always. <laughs>